Marilyn, the prevailing worldview today is that the only thing real is the physical. Particles in fields of force, everything else doesn't exist. That's called materialism. And so the materialistic worldview dominates and gets stronger. Some would say that consciousness defeats materialism. Others would say that consciousness is the perfect expression of materialism. So consciousness becomes the battlefield for the fight over the worldview of the primacy and the dominance of materialism. Well, I'd start by resisting the metaphor of a military battle. Oh, I love I love battle. <laughs> well, this is going to be a gender <laughs> issue between us then. But I would prefer to think that they're complementary and that certainly there is a biological material substrate that is consciousness and is very real. And it is equally true that people have these experiences that transcend this sense of our embodiment, the idea that consciousness can be sort of a metaphysical construct. Uh, I might also question the notion of the dominant prevailing worldview, because if you actually look at survey studies of the population in the United States, uh, it is actually the minority who buy an exclusively materialist model. And it is actually the majority in this culture who accept the notion of a, you know, a divine creator. And that even those people who accept evolution will impose, you know, a god on that as kind of the prime mover. Of no, you're the absolutely thing. right. And again, I'm expressing the, the view of the majority of the the people in my maybe who control the money and the power <laughs> no, I can well, accept boy, that now you're really getting, now we're getting down to brass tacks mm -hmm. it's not only a gender issue it's a class issue <laughs> <laughs> so but but you're right there is the prevailing worldview among cultures in this country and others is that uh, the, the materialism is not the worldview but among uh, scientists among intellectuals it certainly is and there is this gulf which uh, scientists and intellectuals deplore uh, because they think the, the masses are diluted. Mm. I am increasingly fascinated by the discoveries we're making about the brain and the physical aspects of our consciousness. Um, things like intention that, you know, had kind of been woolly and, and ill-defined up until maybe, you know, even five, six years ago. Uh, we now know about these sort of configuration of neurons called the mirror neurons. And we can see that the brain lights up in a certain way when we attribute intention to another person. I find this absolutely compelling and is another manifestation of the wonder of it all. Um, whether that's the complete final story is to me something that, you know, ultimately I think we're all going to have to die to understand, you know, what happens <laughs> after death. Uh, I don't know that it's, you know, easy to report on from this point of view. But if you accept the, the lineage lines of these various traditions, whether they're religious or spiritual or even, you know, pagan, um, where it isn't so much a religious system as it is kind of a, an earth worship mm -hmm. kind of perspective, you see that there is very much a more imbued notion of matter and of physicality. Uh, so, you know, which one's going to win could become a political issue. Uh, one truth claim overriding another because they control the budgets of the National Institutes of Health and the National Science Foundation, and therefore they then become, you know, the, the official authorities on we, what is we true. We would all want to reject that, for sure. And, well, I and don't know that we all would. Many people support the idea that we should put all our resources into the physical aspects of science. Well, what I meant was that over time, even if that dominates, it, it, it can't last, because whatever is true is true, and if that is true, it will last. Uh, but that I, assumes truth is an absolute reified construct. And what I would argue from the history of science is that our model or our understanding of what is true has changed periodically over time, and it's going to continue to change. And my hope is that rather than seeing these kind of militaristic metaphors as the <laughs> dominant paradigm, uh, is to begin to cultivate a, a position of pluralism. And pluralism is something that, you know, we can talk about diversity as a demographic fact. You know, we have all different worldviews and ethnic groups and cultural forms represented in this 
this country, for example. Uh, but pluralism comes with this deep appreciation for the differences, recognizing there are certain common core elements within us, but appreciating the fact that in terms of the complexity of consciousness as a social form, the idea that each of us is part of a larger consciousness, sort of a, you know, a cultural consciousness, then we need to accept that there are different vantage points, different doorways into attending to those realities. Here, I understand what you're saying and I agree with it. Here, here's the reason I use the militaristic language that consciousness either can or cannot defeat materialism. Because that's what materialism has set up. Materialism doesn't say that um, we, we explain some of the things and we can have other things. Materialism is very dominant in its, its approach. It says that if I am real at all, I must dominate. I must explain everything because if there is anything that materialism can't explain, then materialism by its self-definition is destroyed. It can't share the arena with anyone else and maintain itself. It can't do it by self-definition. Well, my hope is that as we move into 21st century life with all of the ways in which complexity and multiplicity of viewpoints come together, that we can begin to build a more humble approach to this question about what is true. You say I'm arrogant? <laughs> and Well, I think that this dominant materialist model is very arrogant, and I think it has led us to all kinds of problems within society. And I think this notion that one system trumps the other one, and that, you know, my guns are bigger than your guns, so I'm going to overpower you, um, becomes a power issue, not an ontological issue. And that probably the, the most important um, aspect of this convergence is that science is being informed by wisdom. And wisdom is being informed by knowledge. And out of that, I think, come a new set of possibilities for how we can understand reality and, in fact, how we live into it.